While the Mongols in the north destroyed the Polish army, Batu Khan and General Subutai rampaged through the south into the heart of Hungary. Tricked into an intense pursuit, the Hungarian king chased down these foreign invaders all the way to the plains of Mohi. Batu Khan led his warriors across the plains, luring the Hungarian king to a battle site far from the safety of his city. As the Hungarians broke away to regroup across the Sayo River, the Mongols prepared to strike. General Subutai would soon arrive to join Batu, having escorted the Mongol camp to the battle site. While the Khan waited for his general, the Mongol vanguard would probe across the bridge to the north. Across the bridge, the Mongol soldiers found themselves heavily outnumbered and beat a hasty retreat away from the ambush. This was not the first time Batu had been outnumbered. Drawing on past victories, he began to stage a coordinated attack. Arriving at the battle site, General Subutai quickly assessed the situation. Be 
Так.
While Subutai rushed to ready his army, Batu was poised to make another attempt at taking the bridge. The Mongols approached the Sayo River and discovered a shallow crossing. signaled to Batu that he was in position, and they began their coordinated strike on the bridge. The Mongols took the bridge and held the open space, forcing the Hungarians into the trees and splitting them into several groups. Now the Mongols could drive the Hungarians back to their camp. One small space with nowhere to run. The Mongols discovered a potential alternative river crossing, a broken bridge. With the Hungarians pinned down, the Mongols closed in to destroy the last of their army.
The Mongols laid waste to the Hungarian fort, sending their king and the last of his army fleeing for their lives. Once again, Batu Khan and General Subutai had outwitted and utterly destroyed their European enemies, striking terror into the heart of the West. victory over the Hungarian king at the Battle of Mohi, the Mongols seemed unstoppable. But a year later, the great Khan Ogaday died. The Mongols pulled out of Europe and returned home. Over the next 20 years, two more great Khans ascended to the throne. Their conquests continued to expand the empire in the east. Then in 1260, the grandson of Genghis became the next great Khan. His name was Kublai Khan. He would rock the foundations of one of the medieval world's most advanced civilizations, China. This is Shangdu. Remember today as Xanadu, it was once Kublai Khan's great northern capital. From here, he jealously eyed the wealth of southern China's Song Dynasty. He wanted to take it and become emperor of all China. The Song Dynasty had ruled over southern China for more than 300 years and the country was prosperous and well-governed. Kublai Khan knew that the key to victory was capturing a strategic city lying far to the south of Shangdu. It was called Changyong. Shangyong was the gateway to the south and the heart of the Song Dynasty's power. Controlling the Han River, a critical access route to cities further along the Yangtze. <laughs> Capturing Shangyong was Kublai Khan's only hope of becoming emperor of all China. The Mongol horde had to take the city at all costs. Kublai Khan, not content with rule over his own lands, coveted the riches of the Song Dynasty to the south. He ordered his army to the twin cities of Fancheng 
and Shang Yang, confident in his tried and tested tactics. Although Kublai's ultimate target was the fortress of Chongyang, the Mongols would first have to control its sister city of Fancheng. The Mongols cleared the bridge of its guards and continued their advance in Fancheng. The Mongols spotted a fortified Song camp, blocking the road to the Twin Cities. Seeing an opportunity to overwhelm the enemy camp, the Mongols called in their reinforcements. Together, the two detachments would strike the camp from both sides, pincering the Song. <laughs> Shut with a great 
with the Song camp destroyed, the Mongols set in motion their plan to seize the Twin Cities. First, they would meet with an allied force at the gates of Fancheng. This assault force would attack the gates of Fancheng, while the Mongol vanguard would defend the siege weapons firing upon the cities. The Mongols met with the Allied assault force at the gates of Fancheng. As the Allied force charged the gates, the Mongol vanguard moved to defend the siege weapons from Song attacks. burned the bridge to Shanyang, preventing a direct assault on the fortress. The assault on Fancheng was met with a barrage of gunfire, forcing the Allied army to retreat. With the gates still unbroken and under guard, the Mongols switched strategies and called on a large group of reinforcements to bring in their mobile camp. The Mongols would besiege the mighty twin cities. The Mongols rallied a force on the bridgehead. The Mongol strategy was to hold the city's bridges so that no Song forces could escape and no reinforcements could enter.
Securing the second bridgehead, the Mongols were one step closer to blocking off all the escape routes. The Mongols took up position on the last bridgehead. Seeing that the Mongols were attempting to block the city's escape routes, the Song began planning a counterattack. Oh, 
The Song launched their counterattack on the Mongols holding the bridgeheads. The Mongols had to hold the three bridgeheads against the Song attacks. Desperate to stop an all-out Mongol assault on their walls, the Song destroyed the remaining bridges to the Twin Cities. Unable to advance, the fortress of Zhangyang remained locked to the Mongols. But with a siege established, the Khan's cause was not yet lost. Twin cities did not yield. 
the Mongols would need a new tactic to breach the Great Song Fortress. Rather than another costly head-on assault, they planned to cut off the cities by blocking the critical supply route at Lumen Shan. The Song defector, General Lu Zheng, advised Kublai Khan that the best strategy to take Shangyang was to construct a blockade, completely cutting it off. Lu Zheng led the Mongol army to the trade route at Lumen Shan and set his plan in motion. The general's plan depended on recruiting local workers who could build defenses. The first step was to eliminate the Song garrison near the village of Lumen.
Mongol army tore through the Song garrison. And with these guardians removed, the people of Lumen gave their support to Lu Zheng and Kublai Khan. Controlling Lumen allowed Lu Zheng to employ Chinese tactics and equipment, including the construction of stone walls. He ordered the people to build walls to block the roads north, cutting off Xiangyang from the rest of the Song. The people of Lumen reported that the village of Boheko, located to the west, would also welcome Lu Zheng's arrival. If the general could get forces to Boheko, it would add both an economic and military boost to his blockade. Ni 
Stout walls now blocked off the first of the major routes to Shangyang. Bohiko not only welcomed Lu Zheng's men, but members of the local militia even defected to the Mongol cause. Zheng's vision was complete. The Mongols' great blockade now cut off the Song cities. However, the Song commanders would not leave Shangyang to stand alone and sent forces to break through the Mongol barrier.
descended on Lu Zheng's men. The general needed to defend what he had taken from his former masters. Don't 
凝聚的决定，得力！中箭手汪静，听从命令。为您的警察兵，心怀坚毅，前进！下马，你做好准备，执行命令。中箭手按照指令行队，警察兵整队前进，警察兵。大家听好，命令即将下达。我会确保它建得很好。技艺高超，不容安歇。我会确保他变得很好。准备接受下个工作。大家听好，命令即将下达。一座需要建造的建筑，准备接受下个工作。我这就建好这座建筑。是，我已准备听从。大家听好，命令即将下达。一座需要建造的建筑。The Mongols maintained control of the Song trade route at Lumenshan, cutting off Shangyang from the south. Thanks to the insights of General Lu Zheng, Kublai Khan's plan to weaken the Great Song fortress was working. Crippled by the loss of their supply route, the twin cities of Shangyang and Fengcheng were ready to fall. The Mongols' new long-range trebuchets would test the mighty walls of the Song fortress, and Kublai Khan would not stop the bombardment until he sat on the throne of all China.